I'd like to tie an improved F fly today. This is a size 16, and I'm using a Daiichi 1100 hook. But any regular dry fly hook will work. It only has two materials. It uses a, some dubbing and CDC for the wing. I'll start with a hook and debarb it. This is used to imitate any any tan tan caddis, but it's particularly good on the on the Madison River in Montana. I fish it there. I'll start with my thread on the hook. This is some A dot A dot rusty done. My dubbing will be some Spirit River UV2 fine and dry, and it'll be this tan color. And the tan color has, with the, the UV material in it, has some pinkish to it. And it seems to really work. I have, I'll have. i show you one other dubbing I use for the second fly. I'll tie this fly a couple of times. Caddis fly have a pretty large body, much bigger than a mayfly. So I'll add some dubbing here. I'm just going in one direction and squeeze and rotate with my thumb and forefinger. I don't know if you can see it here, but the, the dubbing has that pinkish cast to it. Maybe a larger piece. And you notice I'm at the front of the fly, so I'm going to just use this as I go backwards, use my rotary function, move the thread out of the way, go back to where the barb is, and then move forward. Once I'm away from the hook, I don't have to move the thread as much. I'm gonna go up to one eye length behind the eye of the hook. And that measurement is important. You'll see in just a moment. So I have a tapered body. Take your thread all the way to the hook eye. Now for the CDC, I think some of the best CDC material you can get is from Trout Hunter. And this happens to be called Caddis CDC. Here's some natural CDC. They're very similar in color. I don't think you could go wrong with either one. I don't think the fish will care. I try to select two, two feathers that are roughly the same. Here's a bad one, so I wouldn't use that, obviously. But you're looking for two similar feathers in length. So you'll notice that here's a small one, there's a large one. They would work together, but I like to have both similar in size. There's a small one that wouldn't work at all. But you're trying to find a CDC feather that has a lot of barbules on either side. I've got a couple pre-selected here. So you'll notice these feathers are the ones I'll use. And the curved, you wanna match up the, the curves. They happen to be going up here. And I will get the tips aligned and preen all the fibers so they're all extending into one spot just as they combine here. And that's, this is gonna be your wing. And you'll notice that I've got the curve going up and we'll tie in the wing extending over the body. And my measurement is gonna be a little bit longer than the shank of the hook, the body. 
And I'm also going to tie it on the side close to me so that when I wrap the thread, the thread torque will rotate it and it will be flat on top. So I'll visually see where I want to try. I'll take two loose wraps. And at this point, you can push these back and judge the wing. That seems to be fine. So that's two loose wraps. And then I'll take, continue to take touching turns towards the end of the hook. I'll lift both of these feathers up, rest my scissors on the body at about the halfway point. I'm not pulling tight, just taunt. And I leave the butt ends just like that. You'll see why in just a moment. So I'll push these backwards so they're tight. And right where my thread is, I'll take three turns, which makes a nice rounded head. I've got a few small fibers there, so I'll trim those. We'll apply a little head cement. I'm using hard as whole penetrator. I like to apply it to the thread. Just a, a couple of drops is all I need. And then I'll make a five turn whip finish right behind the eye. And we're done. Now you notice that the butt ends are holding that wing up. And that's why you leave so much of a tag. Plus you can't even see it. And with the CDC that will help float the fly even more. Let me tie it another time. Pull out another hook, debarb it. Use my rusty dun. You can see I'm about done with this spool. Start right behind the eye of the hook. Make a few wraps back. This time, I'll use my second dubbing that I really like. This is from Blue Ribbon Flies. It's some Zelon dubbing. This is more the consistency of some hair's ear. It's got shorter fibers. And then in the midst of it is chopped some Zelon, which is some Antron material, I believe. Adds a little bit of sparkle. But this floats really well, too. You notice I'm making a pretty thick dubbing loop, dubbing noodle, rather. I'll go back again. I'll slow down my rotary function so you can see my technique as I go back. I'm just moving it out of the way. Make a couple of wraps right above the barb. And then I'll move forward. And this can be a pretty rough dubbing. I'll put just a tiny bit more. If you look at the natural caddis flies, they were, they're pretty thick body. Again, I left some space here, about an eye length. I'll cut the longer fibers out, which is why I think it's some hairs here. I've got two more, two more CDC feathers selected. I'll put the butt ends together. And the tips, I'll line the tips. You notice know, so I'm aligning them with my left hand as I'm a right-handed tire. I squeeze those together to make the wing, to form the wing. And 
an inch up a little bit at a time. Measure it and tie it on just on my side of the hook a little bit. Two wraps and you can see the feather just rotates a tiny bit. I'm going to measure that. Let me take it off and measure and make it extra long. And I'll show you a technique to help get it the right size. Those are two wraps and you can see it's quite long now. <clears throat> so if you hold up on your bobbin, it releases the pressure and you can pull those fibers down and then tighten it up. Measure again, that looks fine this time. And I'll make tight turns, touching turns, about an eye length away from the eye. Position my scissors on the body and I'm holding the CDC feathers at a 45 degree angle and just trim them. And this time you'll see those fibers will hold the wing upright plus it adds additional floating ability, floatability they call it I believe. So I'll pull these back, preen them back and then push down with my thumb and that spreads the feather a little bit. One, two, three and then just take one wrap around the eye of the hook. I'll put some more head cement on. And a five turn whip finish. And there you have a completed improved F fly. I'll make a link to the fly pattern sheet on my River Keeper Flies website. And I hope you liked the video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up with it. And there's a subscribe button that I was, as I'll periodically add additional fly patterns to my YouTube River Keeper Fly channel.